Well, hello again. Welcome back to the uh, lucky number seven edition of Rankin Records. I'm Mike from Music City. Today I'm taking a big challenge and I'm going to look at the catalog of the Beatles. Uh, a lot of you probably think I'm crazy for trying to do this, and I, and I probably am. But, you know, these are records that I lived through. We all lived through. We know them well. Uh, clearly a case of the ones at the bottom not being bad records at all. I mean, you could almost argue that the Beatles never made a bad record. I, you could pretty much say that. When, when I was young, uh, listening to the radio, I, I remember a time when I thought there was two types of music, uh, the Beatles and everything else. Uh, you know, from perception and quality, you know, the Beatles music was just high, far above anything else, and uh, gave them a lot of respect in that regard. Uh, you know, my first discovery of the Beatles, I'm one of those people who, in, back in 1964, was doing what I did every Sunday night with my mom and dad, sat in the living room and on a small black and white TV, watched the Ed Sullivan Show, and got to see the Beatles make their, their television debut. And it's really hard to describe, uh, you know, how significant a moment that was. It was life-changing, and it's just hard to imagine anything ever happening like that again. I'll never forget going to school that next Monday morning. I was in the third grade, and every all of us sit, standing outside in the schoolyard singing She Loves You, and I Want to Hold Your Hand out loud. And we never heard those songs before. It was just, it was just remarkable. Uh, didn't get to see the Beatles back then. I was kind of too young. You know, they played at Shea Stadium, and of course I read all about it, and we know all about it, that it was hard to hear the band because of the screaming crowds. Uh, the, the sound system was nothing more than uh, the band playing through the PA system. That was the same thing they used to announce the Mets players. So uh, that wasn't, you know, that was that's the way things were back then. But I did get to see all four Beatles live eventually, and that's something I'm really proud about and really happy about. Um, the first Beatle I saw was in 1974 when Elton John made his unannounced appearance, uh, excuse me, when John Lennon made his unannounced appearance with Elton John at Madison Square Garden on Thanksgiving night of 1974. I was sitting there in the fourth row and it was just totally blown away. One of the most uh, remarkable concert moments I've ever gotten to experience. Uh, and fortunately, it was John's last uh, public appearance, public concert appearance. Uh, about a month later, I got to see two shows on George Harrison's Dark Horse tour at, at Madison Square Garden. Uh, in 76, I got to see the two Wings Over America show that Paul had done at Madison Square Garden, and, and I saw Paul a few other times after that. I really haven't kept up following him lately, though, uh, something I regret not doing. And uh, finally, the last one I got to see was Ringo, and I, I have seen his uh, all-star band several times. What a, what a great thing that Ringo did to combine his great songs and singing with uh, other talented artists uh, doing their hits. So got to see all four Beatles. That's kind of cool. But uh, getting into uh, looking at the Beatles catalog, you know, they started out, they were a singles band, just m much like everybody else back then. And some of the early records, as we'll see when we go through these rankings, were just nothing more than compilations of these singles. They weren't really thought of as albums as much per se uh, as, as occurred later on in the Beatles career. And we'll see that, and I think you'll see some evidence of that in the ranking, the ones that were maybe thought of as more albums I'm going to kind of rank higher. Uh, and, and, of course, the Beatles were instrumental in, in getting people to think about making albums rather than, than making singles. And for what we talk about as the records here, you know, back then there was a lot of difference between what they released in the UK, what they released in the US. Uh, you know, they changed tracks around on, on a lot of those early albums before they were thought of as, you know, being predominantly albums. And uh, when, the, when they came out on CD, uh, you know, in the CD era, uh, the releases were focused on the UK releases, and fans like to call them the core uh, albums. And in that core category, there are 13 records, and those are the 13 records that I'm going to list uh, today in the order of my preference. And again, this is another example of least favorite. There, there ain't a bad Beatle record. Now, before we get into that, if you are looking to put together a Beatle collection on CD or, or on vinyl, uh, you need to you need to get out these two. We're not going to rank them. We're just going to kind of mention them, and that's what they call Past Masters One and Two. And on here are a lot of the singles uh, that you won't find on. Well, th where are the singles that you won't find on on the albums? Some fantastic stuff. Your Beatles collection needs to include these. But let's start um, at the bottom Ag again. Uh, we'll, number thirteen. Ag again, not bad stuff. But number thirteen, we're going is going to be uh, Yellow Submarine and. Most most of this record was soundtrack type instrumental things. Uh, there was a few 
few new songs on here, but most they re recycled a couple of singles. Um, but again, you know, good for its purpose at the time as a soundtrack to a movie. Uh, and then behind that, at number 12, we're going to put something similar, Magical Mystery Tour, which is sort of similar. Uh, again, uh, put together a couple of singles in addition to some of the stuff that was in the soundtrack of the movie. And originally, this was a two-record EP released in the UK. Um, great songs. I mean, the title track, Magical Mystery Tour, is just a fantastic song. Uh, so, you know, not, not definitely by no means a, a throwaway record. Now we're going to get into uh, where we're going to wind up being here is uh, with some of these records, these early records that were not so much albums as compilations of, of the songs that the band had together at the time. Uh, and, and number 11 uh, is with the Beatles. One of the things back then, too, if you look at these earlier records, they, were, they had a lot of cover versions on them. And surprisingly enough to... Uh, my young ears and maybe some others, we weren't even aware that these were cover versions. Um, for example, on, on this record, you've got You Really Got a Hold on Me, uh, which was John Lennon's take on uh, Smokey Robinson's song. And, and it, it, it pretty much is the definitive version of that song. What, what a fantastic vocal. And, you know, I'm just trying to think how old I was before I realized that Twist and Shout, what, which is not on this record, what, what, what was not a Beatles song. But again, you know, a mix of, of some great covers and some, you know, and this is, we got some classic Beatles stuff on here, you know, like uh, All My Lovin'. Uh, so, uh, again, you know, not a bad record. And, and this stuff at the time was so, so groundbreaking in terms of just turning the music world on its end. Um, after that, uh, at number, let's see, number 10 is actually the debut album of the Beatles, uh, Please Please Me. Uh, it's been said that this record was sort of a replication of their live set that they were playing at the time in, in the clubs. You know, they played in the Cavern and they played in Germany. Uh, just, just great stuff. Again, you've got a lot of cover versions on here, but you've got classics like I Saw Her Standing There, uh, P.S. I Love You, um, Do You Want to Know a Secret, which was one of the which is a George Harris, great George Harrison song, and, and Twist and Shout is on here, but just a fantastic record, set the world on fire. Uh, and again, this is a record Americans wouldn't be familiar with. We had, you know, different versions of these. They did make those available for CD buyers, which kind of reminisce how they, you know, grew up on listening to the Beatles, but again, we're sticking to these cores. Uh, number nine, uh, Beatles for Sale. Uh, again, uh, still in that pattern of, you know, new stuff with some uh, cover versions. Just just a great record. It's got eight days a week on it. I'm a loser. Just great, great classic Beatles stuff. Um, number eight and number seven, I'm going to kind of do, do sort it together. And the Beatles started making movies when they were famous. And number eight is a soundtrack to the movie Help. Gosh, what a, what a fantastic record. You got, uh, you know, you got to hide your love away. Um, you know, John Lennon showing his, his Dylan influence. The title track, Help, what, an, what, an, what a great, great Beatles song. And like, like uh, the next soundtrack album we're going to look at, uh, one side of the record was from the movie and one side of were songs uh, that were not. Uh, and again, you still, got, you still have some, uh, some cover versions on here as well, too. Um, Number seven, the first Beatles movie, Hard Day's Night, probably my favorite of the Beatles movie. I think it was really exciting because it was meant to capture the spirit of Beatlemania that we were all living through. Love the title track. Just what a, what a great rock and roll song. Again, half of it, uh, new songs, half of it songs in the movie, half of it songs not in the movie, but just, but just a great record. Now, you know, it, it gets real tough now for me uh, with these six uh and, and these, these are six that were clearly, uh, you know, the Beatles doing records. And, you know, we're talking about this Core 13. They came out in a six-year time frame. That, that's a pretty remarkable pace of putting out such high-quality high quality music. But for number six, I know this is a record that a lot of Beatles fans uh, didn't like, and it's one that's also Paul McCartney didn't like so much that he actually had it reissued. Uh, this is Let It Be, number six. And... You know, the story behind this, I'm sure a lot of you know that uh, John Lennon gave the uh, unfinished tapes over to Phil Spector, to, and he added a lot of strings and things on it that Paul didn't like, and Paul, 
as part of the Beatle reissue program, did a Let It Be Naked, where he kind of took that stuff out and trimmed it down. But, you know, this is a record I was I, I was a little older then and really, you know, much more in the music scene and, and just really spent a lot of time with. It's got probably my favorite all-time Beatles song on it, Get Back. I love watching the rooftop video where they perform this. Um, and remember, this was the, although this was the last uh, album that the Beatles uh, released, it was not the last one they recorded. It was the one before the last. It just kind of stuck there for a while. But, you know, it's got Let It Be on it. Uh, just some, just some, just some good stuff. I love, I love two of us. Uh, I know, I know a lot of people aren't too wild about it, but again, uh, a record that meant a lot to me. Um, number five and number four, people always like to put together. Um, I put Revolver at number five, and this is when the Beatles really started concentrating on making records. Uh, their live days have wound down, and they were really looking to become uh, more of just a studio, looking to become just a studio band. But th these records, I think, were just so groundbreaking and the way people looked at them and saw them as albums. Um, Revolver, just a fantastic record. So many, so many great songs on there. And it's uh, predecessor, uh, Rubber Soul. And I know a lot of people may even go so far as to call this their favorite beat al Beatle album, and there'd be nothing wrong with that. Again, just just two fantastic records, um, you know, some diverse styles throughout it, um, all the Beatles contributing, just great stuff. Rubber Soul and Revolver, man, I hope someday we see something in the reissue program uh, where we get, you know, re re remasters of these and maybe hopefully there's some a lot of, you know, studio outtakes and tracks. That, that, that'd be great to put those two of those together. Now, the top three gets really, really tough, and I'll be honest with you, I've juggled that order around several times before I came up with where I am right now. But uh, number three uh, is an album called The Beatles. We all know and love and call it The White Album. It's the Beatle album that I, I, I recall first really, really buying on vinyl, spending a lot of time with when I, when I was younger. I had the poster hanging on my wall, there's just a ton, a ton of good music on this record. Um, and there's also some things that, you know, aren't so great. You know, we, we give up a lot of uh, side three to uh, Re Revolution Number 9, which is not, not nothing much other than a lot of sound and noise. But just so many fantastic Beatles songs on this double record set. Uh, that That's why it's number three on my list. Um, number two. Okay, well, you, you probably know what two are left, and I, I went back and forth on this, but number two, I'm going to go with Sgt. Pepper's. I know this is going to be a lot of people's number one, and, you know, for the longest time, this was always on uh, the, the list of the number one record period of, of all artists that people would put. And sadly, you know, I think today it, it, it's, sort of, it's sort of slipping down, and um, I don't know that there's any kind of Sgt. Pepper backlash or what it is, but fantastic record. I mean, Come on, give me a break. I mean, song after song, uh, it, it just really holds up as being such a such a fantastic record, uh, such an influence, in, influential record that uh, a lot of bands were inspired by to create, uh, you know, future work. Um, you know, what else? What else can you say about it? I mean, one of the most iconic album covers that we've ever had. Um, just, just, just a fantastic record, and um, you know, one uh, the the. Uh, remastered version of it, it, listening to it on Blu-ray, just will blow your mind how, how good it sounds. It's amazing. Number one, Abbey Road. And again, something else. God, the reissue of this just sounds fantastic. Uh, just song after song uh, is just tremendous. Come Together, probably my second favorite Beatles song after, after Get Back. And how could we forget about Side 2? I mean, just such a beautiful concept of, of linking all those songs together on side two. Side two of Abbey Road is, is just one of the greatest uh, musical moments in history. And, um, you know, Abbey Road right up there, number one. And, yep, you, if you haven't, you got to go uh, walk across the Zebra Walk uh, right across from Abbey Road Studios where this picture was taken. I've done it. And if you do do it, they do have a 24-7, uh, uh, 365 video camera so you can go on the uh, website and watch yourself walking across it. Just, just, just be careful. But that's, uh, that's the Beatles' 13 records. Uh, 
gosh, I mean, the Beatles just so an important part of my life and everyone's life. And, you know, you start thinking about things like the Paul is dead and uh, going back and looking through all the clues and having fun with that. And, you know, even as a youngster, getting a little frightened over it. I, I'll never forget, I did do this. I uh, took um, Revolution Number no. 9 off the White Album my, on my dad's reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder and played it backwards. And yes, it does sound like they're saying, turn you on, dead man. Uh, that kept me up awake uh, several nights. But again, um, you know, thank you for, for taking the time to listen to this. I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, as they say, if you like what you see, please uh, share and subscribe. Love the comments that we're getting. I love the suggestions for future uh, Rankin Records, and I promise you there'll be more. Have a great day, and thanks for spending some time with us.